Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the Inside on Equinox Television. For close to three years now, the form of the state of the Republic of Cameroon has been at the center of a socio-political and security crisis that has killed many in the northwest and southwest regions of the country, displaced hundreds of thousands who are now seeking refuge in other parts of the country and some who are now refugees in neighboring Nigeria, several villages bent down institutions attacked as well as elements of the national armed forces killed and gun battles have continued between pro-independent fighters and elements of the national armed forces in the two anglophone regions <coughs> of the republic of Cameroon. Before now, the government of the Republic of Cameroon maintained that the form of the state is non-negotiable and recently, during a peace mission to the Anglophone regions of the country, the Prime Minister shifted from that position and indicated that the government of President Paul Bia is ready to discuss everything except cessation. And there has been much talking uh, about two forms of the state, the government standing and holding firm to the decentralized uh, system of the state, indicating <coughs> that effective decentralization is being uh, reinforced and implemented on the ground as instructed by the President of the Republic. And on the other side, the Social Democratic Front and other political uh, leaders and, of course, for civil society organizations uh, calling for a return to the federal system of government. These two have been on the forefront and in this edition of the program consecrated to the way out of the Anglophone crisis. We're going to be talking about another proposal as far as the form of the state is concerned. A proposal that brings together the two main proposals that have been on the forefront. The one existing now, that is the the uh, decentralized system and the federal uh, system and this is of course confederalism and this is a proposal that is being projected by our guest we come to tell you what confederalism is all about its advantages and why he, he will of course tell us why he thinks that it is the best thing that should be done now the best system that should be adopted in Cameroon now as a long-term solution to the anglophone crisis we will of course talk about the immediate solutions the immediate actions that should be taken now to create an enabling environment for whatever form of the state to be put in place stay with us and meet our guests in some few seconds Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, we are receiving a politician and educationist, Dr. Nick Goyan. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. You are the brain behind this other option uh, that is coming to the forefront as far as the form of the state and the Anglophone crisis is concerned. That is confederalism, which is a system of organization in which there is a union of states uh, with each member state uh, detaining or retaining some independent control over both internal and external affairs? Yes, um, uh, the confederation is something that I've been thinking of and uh, a confederation, I'm going to try to use some, some analogies from our practical life so that people get to understand what it is. But you know, as a medical doctor, even when you have people coming to the hospital, to, they are all ill, you have to make a good diagnosis. And even if you have 20 people with the same diagnosis, the way you apply the medicine and the therapies is not the same. So that you have to, to, tailor, to tailor the treatment to the patient. Even when they have the same diagnosis, you tailor the treatment to the patient. So Cameroon happens to be a special case you know, you could talk of centralization, decentralization, federalism as it is, and confederation as it is in many air, in, in many places. But there's that peculiarity of Cameroon which makes it sometimes difficult for, for, for one form to be, to, to be perfect or the other. Nothing actually is perfect except that which is created by God. 
So uh, whatever man puts in place has got imperfections. But we try to bring, bring along or put in place a system that comes closer to perfection as best as we can. And therefore, after having looked at everything and put all the cards on the table, in the context of uh, where, where, where cessation is off the table, so to speak, what are we left with? And if we are looking just as that, that's what I've been looking at. So cessation is not on the table, so what are the different options on the table? And as I, and I shift things around, I come up with a formula that I think would be best for Cameroon. All right, before we get into the looks and crannies of that formula, uh, let us look at the immediate uh, actions that should be taken now to create an enabling environment for that formula uh, to be implemented or whatever formula that would be chosen to be uh, implemented. When you look at the situation on the ground now, what should be done by the authorities? What should be done by the separatists? what should be done by all the leaders, all the stakeholders? You see, I mean, this has been an, uh, an, uh, a long-going uh, thing for a very long time. Um, and, and, you know, from day one, uh, people of goodwill, including the church, including our partners out there, everybody was like, hey, look, guys, dialogue can solve this problem. Dialogue can solve this problem. Dialogue will solve this problem. But for some odd reason, some people who were responsible for putting in place the dialogue mechanisms thought that the guns would solve the problem. And today we come to the understanding that we could, we could, the gun battles could be running for the next 100 years. The guns will not win. And it doesn't matter how you look at it. It doesn't matter how strong the army is. It doesn't matter how strong Amber is. The gun will not solve the problem because guns only create more violence and more destruction and more anger. And you can solve a problem like this in anger. And therefore, wisdom tells us that we should, we should back out from the violent option and go back to a civilized option and see how we can solve this problem as, as gentlemen. And uh, it doesn't matter which war you can think of in history, it's always solved through dialogue. And dialogue only takes place when all that violence is stemmed. The ceasefire, and people go and sit like gentlemen and talk at a round table respecting each other. So the question you are asking calls for um, us to reflect and find out how we're going to obtain the ceasefire and how we go into structure the dialogue and, and who is going to be talking to who, I think that's what it's all about. Now, talking about ceasefire, because that is one of the steps that will uh, stop the guns from talking and, of course, restore some peace in the two regions. What kind of ceasefire are you talking about? The Social Democratic Front, for example, when the PM was in Bamenda, called for a bilateral ceasefire. Uh, and the Prime Minister responded, saying that uh, it's impossible, it, it, we can't have a bilateral ceasefire, but the pro independence fighters should drop their guns. The military cannot drop their guns because they must continue to protect the people, properties, and the territorial integrity of Cameroon. We need to be very careful here with the use of terms. And the problem in, um, in, 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 in countries like ours is that um, some, the way terms are used, they are defined and understood differently by different persons, and that's what causes the confusion. You know, ceasefire is ceasefire everywhere in the world. Ceasefire means, you know, to the two sides that are shooting, stop shooting. That's what it means, just as simple as that. Ceasefire doesn't mean that this side stops and that side shoots. No. Ceasefire means ceasefire. Ceasefire means keep your positions, turn, up, turn the barrels down, and stop pulling on the trigger. That's what it means. It's just as simple as that. Ceasefire does not mean give up your positions. It means stop shooting. It's as simple as that. Now, when the, when the guns stop shooting, then now we can listen to the voice of human beings. And, you know, you create the favorable conditions for a dialogue. 
And the more we dialogue, the more, the more the guns go to the ground. The more the guns go to the ground, and the more people drop the guns. And the more they, they gather them, and they bring them to where they have to be brought. It is the dialogue, it's the process. Everything is a process. It's the, it's the dialogue that, that makes that happen. It is the return of love, respect, and understanding that brings the guns from the bushes and brings them to a pile, somewhere where they are kept, where it is safe. That is how it works, and it's a principle. So when we don't do it like that, and we keep using that force, it doesn't, it, it doesn't tend to work. And then, because it's not working, you know, we, we say that, okay, if you don't bring the guns, we'll kill more of you. But again, as I said, killing people is not the solution. Is there an alternative that you can use and still get the result without killing people? Yes. Is this the use of wisdom? Is the use of understanding? Is the use of respect? Is the use of love? So you can still achieve whatever you want to achieve without killing people. And the more people you kill unnecessarily, the more you move away from reality. Now the um, Prime Minister, Chief Dr. Joseph Jangute, to back up government's position as far as this issue of ceasefire is concerned, um, said if the military dropped guns, if the soldiers dropped their guns, if they leave the region, because there has also been a call for demilitarization of the two Anglophone regions, there's going to be chaos. It would, it would look like government has handed over the population to uh, those who are referred to as uh, separatists or pro-independence fighters and so on. No, uh, when, 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 when the military drops its guns, it, it's, it's a different concept. I mean, we are going to these polemics. You know, you know, a few years back we went into some polemics of grand debat, large debat. It's just you know, when people don't just want to understand each other, they they, they mix up things and they create a planter malaxe kind of a situation. No, no, dropping the guns, drop the guns. As far as the military is concerned, doesn't mean that the military is no longer the military. The simple thing is stop shooting. It's called ceasefire. Just stop shooting. Even if the military is still there in Bamenda, in, in, in wherever, stop shooting means stop shooting, even just withdraw to your camps, even if you are still in, in, in Bamenda, but there, there, there will always be military there. Just go back to your camps and just be there. And then the, um, the, the, the Amba boys or whatever, just stay where you are. And, um, and let's begin to talk somehow. As we keep just trying to give uh, you know, our definitions to the different terms and so on, it's, it's like a car that is stuck in mud and just keeps, you know, beating itself in the mud and so on. Spot. We have to be reasonable and use wisdom because as we keep to our, we are stuck to our positions and keep arguing about words, more people are dying and more people are suffering and the cost of the war keeps going up and it doesn't make sense. We must use the God-given wisdom that we have to solve the problem and if we don't have it let us go on our knees and ask God for that wisdom in humility and he will give us where there's an absence of wisdom and humility we are going to pay a huge price for lives in very simple terms the military soldiers uh, pro-independence fighters or separatist fighters lay down your weapons yes the concept of laying down their weapons means turn the barrels down and stop pulling on the trigger. After that, what next? After that, when that happens and everybody is comfortable that they're not going, you are not, nobody is going to shoot you from the back, then we can now begin to, 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 to shout across, hey, wh what exactly are you saying? Can, can you say it? Can you tell me what you are saying? And then we begin to talk like human beings. Because as of now, it's the guns that are talking. When, I, when I'm pointing at you with the gun, I've got the power over you. If I'm the first to pull the trigger, I've got the power over you. I mean, no conversation, no reasonable conversation can get on under those circumstances. But when the guns are down, then people use their ears and then use their reasoning faculties to, to
to, to go through the process and say, look, you say, like, why were you shooting at me? You say, okay, okay, brother, look, let's talk about this. We are brothers. Let's stop killing each other. It doesn't make sense. But hey, look, you stole my cocoa yam, and then, you know, that's what it's all about. You kill my you kill my wife. You kill my... Then we say, okay, let's forgive each other. Let's go back to the basics. Why did we get into this in the first place? And then work it out, you know, from the roots, and then get it back to a meaningful conclusion, and then draw some conclusions, and then we'll be human beings at the time, just continuing doing this stupid, stupid thing and killing people killing people is not the solution killing people is not the solution and there has been calls coming from within and without from political leaders like you from civil society organizations from non-governmental organizations even from the European Union and other the international and continental organizations for an end to violence but uh, for close to three years now military force has continuously uh, been implemented on the ground uh, and now there is um, a call that is yet to be answered by many though some have already answered according to official information uh, from uh, the official sources some have answered they have dropped their guns and are now in the uh, centers of the uh, disarmament, immobilization, and reintegration committee, and so on. But many are yet to respond to that call. What do you think is the problem? Why is it that all the promises, all the the assurance given by government, uh, we're not going to arrest you, we'll take care of you, uh, we will give you a new life, uh, and so on. Why is it that all these promises are failing to convince or to persuade those who are carrying guns in the bush? Now, there is a concept that we must understand. If we take, um, if we go into the bushes and just randomly select, um, for people who don't understand statistics, I'll try to be as simple as possible. Let's just go out there and select a hundred of the fighters. Um, you can, you, we can preach disarm disarmament as we have it now to them as best as we can, five of them would, 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 would actually follow the instructions and drop the guns. But those are only five out of a hundred. Yeah, you can, you can talk about those, you can, you can, you can, you can use those five and, and say you are winning. But, but the statistics tell a different story. So you have a handful who have dropped their guns, which is a great thing. That is good. But the thing is, what is the mechanism or what, what strategy are you going to use so that 99% of the guns come down? That is what you should be heading for. Not looking for the 5%. Look for what are you going to do to have 99% success, not 5% success. And, and that, that's exactly what we are saying. You could continue with this strategy for the next 10 or 20 years. The most you will get is 10% success. And then, to try to force success, you go out there and try to shoot and kill more children. That is not the solution. Spilling more blood is not the solution. Use wisdom, face the truth, use love, and do what is right, and solve the problem. Killing people is not the solution. All right, Doctor, we're going to take a look at what the newspapers reported this week. In some few minutes, we'll be back, and we'll take you into the nooks and crannies of confederalism. The Advocate reports that the Anglophone crisis has finally hit the nation's political capital Yaoundé. The Voice reports intellectuals' anger over government's bad faith. According to Professor Willibrot Zingwa, President Paul Beer has no genuine intention to resolve the Anglophone crisis. And Akere Muna says government lacks will for true dialogue over the crisis. On the other side, the Guardian Post projects fresh favorable conditions for dialogue unveiled by detained Ambazonian leaders. And the Post reveals that government's denial of the Anglophone crisis is carrying away donors. Sonara in flames is the big news on the front page of the Sun. On the fire incident, the median sees government evokes accident while separatists invoke the hand of God. The post-weekender highlights 
startling revelations from whom in the northwest region of the country on how a racket between the military and Iglesias son sparked deadly clashes. The Star reports the arrest of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement CRM political party vice president and 351 militants during a march on major cities according to Newswatch supported by the imprisoned national president Maurice Camto. As reported by the Horizon, the African Union is poised to examine the presidential election petition filed by Professor Maurice Camto and the CRM political party. You welcome back and we're still with our guest, Dr. Nick Nguyen, politician, educationist, and of course, medical doctor. Uh, Dr. Nick, uh, confederalism or confederation, let's start from square one, yes. so to speak. Yes. Let's go to the floor level. Yes, to the floor it? level, so that, so that every mama and every papa, every child can understand. Can understand what we because when about. you use this big word, you, people can get confused. But let's get, like they say in French, terre à terre. Yes, what, is, right. it, what is it all about? Good. As I was, before I came into the studio, I was trying to look for some um, analogies in life that we could use so that people could actually, you know, get into, get into the meat of the things. Now, you know, I was thinking of love because a country is built on love. Now, I know you're married. When you started with your woman, probably you were 22, 23 years old. And, you know, the love is so strong. You are so born together. It's hot. It's hot like pepper. It's like that. You know, there's no gap. A razor blade cannot go between the two of you, okay? That is, that is centralization. Centralization is very, it's like that. But that centralization only works when there is a glue of love. So if you're going to be talking centralization where there is no love, it doesn't work. So if you say centralization, centralization, and inside people are looking for the glue of love and it's not there, but there is more of corruption, poor governance, cheating, disrespect, and so on, it doesn't work. So it doesn't matter, then you, you punch people and say, no, it's, it's centralization, it will not work. That's the problem we are facing now. So the only thing that makes that centralization very strong it's love. It's love. It's respect. It's keeping your word. It's making each other comfortable. Then people will glue together. That's what happens when two people just fall in love. It's so strong. But with time, when you begin to notice that there's some cro crookedness about your your the other fellow, then you some, begin to some lines. Telling, some lines, yes, yeah, some disrespect. some gaps, some disrespect. You can't keep your word. You are untrustworthy, and so on. That's exactly that's exactly exactly what is happening because we are human beings and we are social beings, and it's not very different from that. So there's no way you can sing decentralization and get it right if there's no love when there's no respect. So in any in the country, just like in, in a society, in a home of everything, the glue because we are human beings, is love, is respect, is truth, is justice. Keeping your word is good governance. When these things are in place, there's no corruption. There is no, there's, merit, there's meritocracy. There's no tribalism and so on. So when you begin to have some of these ills coming into the system, that glue is not strong. Now, so, Let's take go back to the family. So you start with your woman, you know, you are 22, 23, and, and it's like that. Then when you come very close, then you begin to notice some sharp ends that make you jump back and say, hey, there's something about you that I don't seem to get. <coughs> then you stand, up, you stand apart and then you look at each other eyeball to eyeball and you begin to wonder what, what's going on here. And you begin to decipher a couple of things. So then you go and get married. All right? And then everything is going well. Then, before long, some other issues begin to come in, and you, you, the children are coming in, the family is coming in, then, then you, there's some drift and so on. But that drift is contained in the family. Before long, there's some little quarrels that break up, and then you begin to, to inform your pastor, inform your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, and then your wife cooks, you don't eat, and, and these kind of things. These are things that we live every day. And um, sooner or later, in, in the family setting, you know, on the family bed, the husband sleeps. 
over there and turns his back and is facing over there and the wife sleeps and turns her back and facing over there that's decentralization are you getting what i'm saying yeah you're still you're still you're still in your in your family bed but your wife is is, is facing the other side of the bed and uh, your husband is facing you pretend that everything is okay but it's still not okay that's decentralization we move from that point of centralization where everything was okay but because love respect and that were absent you know then you you, you you, you do that what so, was what was keeping you in uh, keeping you together yes it's been weakened by yes, some yes yes uh, yes yes elements either, either it was centralization by core initially it was not sent the, the centralization was not a centralization born of love it was a centralization that was born of coercion. Uh, the centralization in Cameroon, Cameroonians never ag agreed that we love you so much that we can only sleep in one bed and breathe the same air. It's, it's, not, it's not true. It was centralization by coercion. So people just woke up in the morning and realized that they were bound to something called centralization and they had to work with it. And, and they were bailing to it. Yes. And they were working with it, hoping that they will see the bonds of love and respect. Who will keep that will keep that together? So the centralization, you know, when you what the centralization by coercion is that kind of marriage where, you know, in some tribes where they just go and grab a woman who do, and grab this woman over there and grab that man over there and and whether the parents or some of them just bind them together, like it happens in India or some in some in some other tribes, I don't want uh, communities. I don't want to mention them, but where a boy and a girl are getting married, they don't know each other, but the families kind of force them together. That is that is that is that is uh, that's forced centralization. But when you have people, two people out of love decide to be, you know, to, to live a centralized life, that's a different thing. Because to do that, you must forget yourselves, you must sacrifice other things, and then look for that common good, and put in the glue of love and respect, and do what you have to do, and it will work. You but must if you, accept each yes, other. you must accept each so other, but if you do it by, correct, if you do it by caution, if you are going to do it by caution, and refusing to put in the ingredients, the, the cement that binds the, 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 the house together will not work that's where we are today and you cannot use force to make that work because human beings are human beings it doesn't matter how hard you try it will not work if you force them they're not good now so we go from there and then we say let's try a formula that works and then you propose a, uh, cent uh, decentralization decentralization is that sleeping on that bed and the husband turns and is facing this way the wife turns and is facing that way making babies is a problem then uh, we, we we say let us choose another let's choose another formula that works. The, that, that other formula is um, is federation. Is federation? <coughs> federation. You are still in the same in the same uh, on the same bed uh, in the same room, but the the husband or the wife puts her mattress on the on the floor. The husband is lying on the one is lying on the bed over there. Or you decide okay. So you have two rooms. Two, no no two, two 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 rooms is confederation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Right. So this is the tricky part. In federation, you are in the same room. The, the, the husband puts his mattress on the ground. The bed is kicked out. The wife puts her mattress on the ground. They are, they are all lying on the floor. And they are not making babies. They have some common things that they are doing together. But they are not making babies. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh -huh. But um, to have more peace and more understanding, they say, look, uh, why don't you move to the... No, move to your... Uh, initially, you, you had your room and I had my room. That is, that's what happened initially. The, 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 the wife had her room. The husband had his room. And then they agreed to come to one room. And then they locked the door of the, of, of, of the woman's room. So we are saying, no, probably you should go back to your room. Let me stay in my room. You do your laundry in your room. I do my laundry in my room. You earn... You, you, keep, your, you keep your salary to yourself. I keep my salary to myself. But when it comes to paying the electricity bills in the house, we do something about it. Then we make sure that we watch over the windows so that thieves don't break in. We are going to hire a security guard, call a soldier and put him to put him out there. We both pay. And uh, you know, you bring your brother, you bring your brother, I bring my brother, they watch over the doors and the, and the compound so that nobody breaks in. And we jointly pay them. Then when we have to be sending invoice abroad to talk about our nation, in, the, in our foreign affairs, we jointly pay for that. So there are some 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 uh, some um, some bills that we've got to, to 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 be paying together. Let's discuss that. Then, since you you have your own mother tongue in your room, you and your children can be, be talking your own mother tongue. 
I and my own children will be talking our own mother tongue in my own room. Are you, is it making some sense? But we are together under one roof. Once in a while, once in a while we can adopt a few children, but we stop making babies. That's what confederation is all about. To understand again the power play in, um, in, in all this, I was thinking, you know, those of us who come from the village, you make, uh, sometimes it's cold, and you make a fire. A make, you make a central fire, and people sit around the fire. Now, when the fire is just warm and nice, people gather around that fire and it's great. But when the heat is too much and it's unbearable, people step away from the fire. And depending on how sensitive you are, you know, you can sit very close to the fire, or you, you move away from the fire, but you are still relating to the fire. And uh, so how much distance are you giving yourself and the fire is important. So the fire represents the, the center of power, that central government. And the, how, how, how distant we are moving away from that center of the, from, from that center of the fire is, you know, you know, is that relationship between, so centralization, you are close to the fire. Decentralization, you moved away just a little, you just backed away from the fire. Federalism, you're given some space, and, and the confederation, you've given yourself as much space as you want from the fire, but it doesn't mean that you have left the room, it's just that you move closer to the wall and you're leaning on the wall and you're still there with the fire. All right, we're talking about the union of states with each member state uh, containing some or retaining some uh, independent control yeah. over its internal or external affairs in the Correct. case of Cameroon uh, how can this work so we were saying that in the confederation because a confederation differs from a federation in uh, there's one cardinal principle uh, principle or characteristic that makes these two different they look similar but they are, they are not, you know, there's some similarity, but they are not exactly the same. The, simula the similarity is like a, a plantain looks like a banana, but when you come closer, they are not exactly the same. But from a distance, you can say a child who doesn't know the difference says the plantain and the banana are the same. They are not. Now, the, the concept of confederation has just matured over the years. But many years back down the line, starting from the... 18 something or whatever, I, I was reading that on the computers, on the internet, um, in the, you know, when democracy just came, out, came, came around. The, um, the, the confederation and the federalism were kind of like not very clear, and people were using the terms interchangeably. But recently, there has been a clear definition between what is federation and what is a, a, um, a confederation. What is that line Good. that divides the two? And to understand that line very well, Canada is a good example, Belgium is a good example, and, the, and Britain is a great example. And you will see how that relates to Cameroon. If you take what we call Great Britain, Let's go back to that, to, that, to, to, to that great nation called Great Britain. Great Britain is not one country. Great Britain is England. England is a country. Wales is a country. Oh, no, no, let's use the word state. It would be better. England is a state. Wales is, is a state. Scotland is a state. And Northern Ireland, or the Republic of Ireland, is a state. So they came together under that Union Jack and they they are called when they come together like they are called Great Britain. You know, so they have some things that they do in common. But Scotland has got its own Prime Minister. England its own Prime Minister. Wales its own Prime Minister and Northern Ireland its own Prime Minister. You can see that during this Brexit kind of thing, where the, the whole Britain wanted to come out, Scotland was saying, no, you, 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 you of Great Britain might want to come out, but we of the Scottish, we don't want to. We have our own. So you see, the Scotland was able to speak for herself and say, okay, you might want that, but we don't want it. That's the kind of thing you want for Cameroon. We come together, because in Cameroon there's no, there's no question. There is West Cameroon or Southern Cameroon, as you might like to call it, there is East Cameroon. These were two states. It's just that somewhere along the line, 
the lines were blurred, but it doesn't matter how hard you try to blur them, they will never go away because the two territories are well defined. They have their cultures, they are a people, and so on. They have their history, and there's nothing you can do about it. So trying to blur it just creates better confusion, and you make people down necessarily. The most sensible and wise thing to do is to accept that you are a people, and these other aren't a people. So that since history did this to us, what can we do exactly so that we have a comfortable life and live together? That's what wisdom calls for. By trying to, to, to whitewash this side to say you don't exist, it's, it's, it's looking for trouble. It will never happen. What wisdom calls for is to accept you as you are and bring you to the fold and respect you for who you are and see what mechanisms can be put in place for everybody to live in the house comfortably. Accept the differences. Trying to wipe away the differences is a mistake. It's rather upset the differences because those differences make us stronger. And then we will take the best, we'll copy the best of what, what is good in each other and then throw away what is not good and work like that. But trying to say, you must be like me, is a mistake. And that mechanism which you're talking about, you think uh, the best is confederation. Correct. Now, how to implement that in Cameroon. Correct. So we cannot talk of a confederation when you are not dealing with states. It should be very clear. Confederation is the formula that you use when you are dealing with two states that decide to come together. Now, East Cameroon did not go and grab West Cameroon in an act of war. They were not a captured territory. You didn't go and shoot their king down and bring them, you, you didn't bring them over as if they were slaves. And then you decide to do what you were. No, no, it was an, it, it was, it was, I understand that it was an agreement. I don't know whether it's true or false, but let's say it was true. It's an agreement for two brothers to come together. So who are these, these two states, West Cameroon and East Cameroon, they agree to come together. When they do that, the best understanding, you know, in 1961 when we came together, Federation Confederation was, a, was, a, was, was, those things were mixed together. But today, because we have understood the, the concepts better, we are going to go with for Confederation, not Federation, so that those boundaries can never become hazy again, so we can actually stand apart and respect each other. Now, Confederation again is an issue between two states that come together. While federation, as of now, a federation, you cannot have two states federating under the new definitions of federation and confederation. A federation is a concept which works best in a, in a country like, um, like, uh, Nigeria, for like Nigeria, for instance, or, or yes, like Nigeria. But, but let, me, let, me, let us come back to Cameroon and use our local examples in Cameroon so that people don't say they didn't understand. Let us, let, let us redefine Cameroon as being the French-speaking Cameroon. I'm taking it just to use as an example. Because we are mentioning things in, uh, in Nigeria, Cameroonians will not understand and they'll keep, you know, there are some smart Cameroonians who keep cheating people and bringing confusion. Let us say that in, the, in, in Cameroon, for the purposes of our, of our exercise, West Cameroon does not exist. It doesn't really exist. Cameroon refers to the French-speaking part of Cameroon, where English is not an impediment. It's French-speaking. But if we look at French-speaking Cameroon, we see that there are three blocks. There's a northern block, there is a Beti Iwundo eastern block, and then there is a Sawa Bamileke block. All right? You can see these three blocks. They are very clear. But these blocks on their own are not states. But these blocks have some cultural affiliations or some things that make them unique in their own way, which, 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 which makes a centralized system or difficult to handle. So under those circumstances, if they want to go for good governance and they want to improve on their management structures, they will come around and say, okay, let's do something that is sensible. The northerners can have some kind of autonomy of their own. Those of the, of the eastern bloc can have an autonomy of their own. These sour Bamelikis can have an autonomy of their own. And the concept that you will use there is federation. You're getting the difference. It's federation. And you cannot go past federation because these, 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 these three communities are not states. 
But when you now are dealing with Anglophones over this way and Francophones over this way, these are these were states and they are states. And the concept of federation would not work very well. And you have to go for a better tool which is confederation. Because with confederation you can you can add more to your quiver that gives you more autonomy and stability. Does that explain why there was a shift from uh, the federal system to the unitary system? Yes, it was easy to do that. It was easy to blur the lines. And this time around, if we, if we are going to re redefine things, you need to move, step back a little further and dig, and, dig, and dig a better trench so that people don't just cross the lines very easily. All right, we're going to take some interviews now and we'll be right back in some few minutes. from the country into their hands, certainly score. I would like here to recall that nobody, wherever you belong, have the right to take the laws of this country to his hand. Killing, looting, burning. You should rally behind our head of state, behind the administrative authorities of the region, to show up our part of our communities, those that are trying to bring disorder, in security, in our families, in our communities, in our region. Nobody should hate his brother as a result of his political opinion, his religion, his cultural belonging. Nobody should go into the bush to express what he thinks. Asking therefore to everybody to come back for those who have gone to the bushes, to normal civil life, by joining the GDF team. The head of state have fought on them and they should come out of the bushes to start a new life. Measure has been taken in the GDF team here in Baranda to take care of them. We are living in crisis, a multi-form crisis. There is um, peace crisis, there is economic crisis and what we are we, 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 we watch and see and uh, uh, live in uh, from uh, Limbe with the Sonara problem that touch us because it's around 45% uh, of our money that we are keeping out yearly and we get it from, we got it from uh, Limbe by, from the Sonara. The actors in Cameroon in the first run, in the first place of dialogue, inter-religious dialogue, inter-confessional dialogue, truly uh, build the society in the respect. I'm not the one far of that. I've been doing it for many. I will not accept that Islam be, should be in Christ in Cameroon. I will not accept any way that believers in Cameroon or religious Cameroon should be also in Christ. I will not accept to be used. And because the future of this country, let me tell you, uh, Riley, the future of the Cameroon, there is another war coming. There is another war coming. Here in prochaine guerre qui arrive, ce sera la guerre interreligieuse. Et nous devrons faire très attention, we must be very careful. The worst hit in, this, in all this crisis, because even without the crisis, the whole of Pamol is enclaved. We don't have access to the market centers, which is our main area of operation, like others benefit in, who are on major uh, roads or, on, uh, or uh, in major marketing centers. We have suffered a lot of damage in our rubber plantation in Bay Estate, which is in the Meme Division. We lost the whole factory, the mini factory we have there, uh, which was uh, milling our oil and uh, preparing, handling oil and storage there. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we lost the mill. We lost uh, two new tractors we bought, uh, two brand new tractors we had. We lost uh, two vehicles and uh, also our offices were vandalized and uh, some other uh, tractors were also vandalized. So they, we paralyzed the whole uh, by estate. The lobby, the main supply of water to the mill was uh, damaged, was burnt down. So the whole mill 
was stopped. The whole, the whole thing was stopped and the, the, the guys came and drove away workers from their offices, bent down uh, to about two houses in the Penja, uh, vandalized the office in the Penja, took away all the tools, the harvesting tools, my farming tools, and wheelbarrows there. And uh, the, I think we even lost uh, uh, some motorcycles too, which we kept there. Coming down to Lobe Estate, uh, there too we lost uh, a lot of uh, machines which were vandalized. To rehabilitate this, what the damage which had been done to bring back the plantation for this past time. In fact, uh, when we made the evaluation in 2018, it was, we have to spend 1.4 billion. I stay where I, my house is situated, that's a hotel, Ocean Wave Hotel and the Gulf. University, you know. So when these things explode like this, people who were in the hotel just were packing their bags, running away. The students in the school, you know, all of them packed their small bags and they were running away. I myself, I went right to Middle Farms, put the nowhere on the rise, and then middle. No, I took off with my family. This is not the first time. It has been about the second or the third, but this one this time. I've been a very serious one. I was sitting on my balcony when I heard the explosion, boom, and a lot of light. Right now, we have gone into the factory. You know, it takes a long process. This factory has been left for three years without attention. So you go gradually, everything was gripped. You have to go into the factory, clean the conveyors, clean the digester, clean the presses, which were stuck with, uh, with um, material. The plantations are now habitable, they are now secure. The military is doing a wonderful job both in Mundemba and the Kundu Titi. Even those in Mbonge and Kumba who are taking care of the route to Ndian. So uh, as I can guarantee you right now that I'm talking to you, uh, I would be both to say that we have been, we have been able to make the place secure for the inhabitants and people who are there. You know, I'm not sure you ever will hear again that uh, the Amber boys are, the, are disturbing uh, the inhabitants of the plantation and the vicinity in Tian now that like I'm talking to you. That one, I take it from me. We have close to uh, 6.5 million francs, billion francs for, for the meal which the government has uh, uh, made available for us, which as I told you, the program is uh, getting the money from finance and the treasury is now, is, is, uh, we have a squeezed treasury because uh, with all these crises we have in the northern and southwest, a lot of money is deployed for security, uh, which is understandable. Uh, but uh, that notwithstanding, we keep on pleading to uh, to the government, who uh, we'll, we'll have always had a, a very, very uh, positive reaction to our cry, especially the Minister of Finance, because he even gave us a, uh, a subvention to buttress uh, uh, the little effort we're making to sustain the workers and he uh, put, avail put available to us uh, 1.2 billion francs for accrued wages which uh, have so far uh, disbursed 500 million which has helped us to survive all this while. So I think that uh, for the government, for those who are involved in this, like um, uh, the Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Plan and uh, uh, Economy and Economy and Minister of Finance, I would say that uh, we pay a lot of gratitude to them. And not forgetting also the uh, Prime Minister, uh, Prime Minister, uh, past and uh, current, who uh, have been in, in this uh, dossier 
very strongly to be sure that Pamul survives because Pamul is a live warrior of India. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us, Dr. Nick Nguyen. Why do you think that um, it will be the best thing to do to uh, adopt the confederal system? Are you saying that uh, if this were to be done, we won't have this in the nearest future? You mean a repeat of this? Um... A repeat of what is happening in Cameroon today? Well, even in countries, even in countries that um, are quite independent and seem to be happy, uh, there are still problems because we are human beings. The only place, the only place where there are no problems is in heaven. That's the only place. But as long as uh, you are married, I'm sure you're always having problems with your wife. I have. We all have problems. So to say that you're going to, even in the church, there are problems. Um, even as we talk, when you go to, go to any presidency, go to the presidency of any nation, there are problems because we are human beings. So it does the way it is. We are, and 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 the only way to not have problems that are insurmountable is to make sure that we live according to principles. So it does not matter what system you create in the world where there are two people. Two, just two human beings. Whether they come from the same mother, whether, whether they be twins, whether they come from different tribes, or whether one comes from, the, from under the sea and one from above the sea, as long as there are two human beings, we are talking of two mindsets. And as long as there are two mindsets, there would always be differences. And those differences are good. And all you need to know is to work in love, work in respect, work in truth walk in the light. Don't try to outsmart the others. Don't cheat. Make merit the, 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 the part of the system. All of that put together is called good governance. You know, as long as you create a system where you live happily with each other, it will be okay. So it doesn't matter which system you bring, but if there's an absence of love, an accept, ab absence of truth, an absence of accountability, there's an absence of respect and if transparency 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 also another word for transparency is truth and um, and capsule table do things in a way that are traceable and you have nothing to hide in the cupboard we'll be okay in fact some have said that if if the decentralization had been put in place 20 years ago and elements of truth we will have no problem so we're having problems now because though we tried, you know, we, we pulled out a cart, you know, to deceive the people. Oh, we'll give you decentralization. And while people were looking at it, we hit the cart for 20 years. And then you come around again, the pot is boiling, then you pull the cart back. Oh, decentralization. Effective people said, no, no, you added the word effective. So, so people said, no, we, we saw that cart before, pull out a different cart. And I'm telling you, that decentralization cart is a fast, it's not good. What are the advantages of the confederal system? Well, the confederal system is, it will put anglophones over here and Franco, not, not anglophones, anglophones, I'm using anglophones in the, in, in, the, in the definition of an anglophone again, are those people that belong to that state called West Cameroon. Uh, whether they speak in whether they speak English or not, that's not the issue. You could be a grandmama there, but you don't speak English, but you're an anglophone. But when you use the term anglophone as speaking English, it brings confusion. And people, some people who are smart, they like to use that to confuse people. So, an anglophone refers to that person who whose genetic material is from a territory called West Cameroon. Now, if we agree on that. We'll have these two people sitting together, sitting, you know, across from each other and agreeing on certain things and saying, you have these liberties, you have these liberties, we have these shared concerns and we deal with that. And most of the people on the side of West Cameroon who have been rejecting the, the concept of confederation or, confederation or federation or whatever are mostly people of the southwest region who think that they are being marginalized by the people of the Northwest region and uh, they would rather go for decentralization where they are actually a free people but they are making a big mistake. 
you're just you will just be subjugated by the by the by 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 the majority of the francophones and you have no breathing space you think you are running away from from northwesterners you are running to you can run away from fine pan to fine that decentralization will not help you but we decentralization again is not as bad as it sounds but it has to be used in context a knife is a knife is good if you use a knife to do the right thing it's good but you can use the knife wrongly and it will hurt you so if we have our two we, we are in the confederation and you have west cameroon and east cameroon here then we go to the concept of decentralization and borrow something from that decentralization which would help us to make our confederal states better which means that if we bring over the concept of decentralization and inject it into west cameroon then the southwest will be have, will be will be functioning in west cameroon with with, with with some autonomy from the northwest all right they share some common values which define west cameroon and then we also bring that concept of decentralization over to 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 to, to east, east cameroon. cameroon so that the people of the north you, you you've seen the primary schools in the north right the grass the children don't have benches they sit on locks of wood yeah, or in yeah, the sand yes, sir. very cliffed yeah and they don't have water you know there were some children who died up there because they went fetching water from a pit and water fell whatever a wall fell and, and killed them so that they can solve their problems you know so that if you have a pothole in your road you're not going to wait for the central government in Yaoundé to stay fill the pothole that's why you see a lot of potholes in the country keep extending because you are not allowed to touch that pothole until Yaoundé gives the order and if you even are of goodwill and you try to do something that is reasonable you will be put in prison for prison for doing something that is good somebody somebody who doesn't have two brains who is not smarter than you in Yaoundé must give the instruction that you should fill the pothole that's 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 not that's not that's not correct you know and anglophones are particularly angry with this way of doing things because we grew in a different system where we have this concept of uh, community development and uh, where community development is i bring the best of myself you bring the best of yourself we jointly do something for common good and so so if if i'm passing on the road and i and i see dirt on the road it's my responsibility to take that dirt off it's my risk of responsibility not to do something that would harm something that belongs to the community which means that you see like the good road in bonaberry if that is the beautiful road there but there's grass growing on the on the on the spaces that were left to be for flowers which means that in the anglophone concept with our community development we will all come out and clean and clear that grass we will all plant flowers we will all make sure that there are no markets on the road and we will protect what is com what, what what is common to us our, our our quartier or our living environment will be clean but we come here and we 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 we, we, we are forced into the culture where we are not supposed to do anything for ourselves it's only the government that has to do things for you and then since the government cannot solve all problems you see a you, then you see a nation that is trying to develop but is dirty is trying to develop but is so corrupt and so on so that is what is hurting people and if we bring now decentralization into this into these into these uh, federal states in this confederal states then though uh, the french speaking cameroon or east cameroon though is so massive if you were not to do that you know the, the the centralized kind of government will continue to operate in there and oppress the people so when you bring decentralization there then the people in marwa will be able to build their schools because you know there will be no prefers no super prefers no governors and so on you would elect your own administrators they will do things for you you will raise your own income and use it and you only send send a, a fraction of it to the central government which is in Yaoundé. So when everybody, from, from what everybody raises as money, you send something to the central government. The, the central government uses a formula to take a portion of it again and redistribute and give it back to you and then use that to do some national things like looking after the army, looking after the national airways and, and, and uh, railways and, and planes or whatever, so foreign, we, foreign things and so on. And then uh, we, 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 that's the way it's going to work. And, and then you, you can have your, you know, West Cameroon can have its own economy, East Cameroon can have its own economy, West Cameroon can have its own uh, currency, East Cameroon can have its own currency, but we agree to have that currency a free flow, um, uh, 
flow freely amongst our people. You know, um, goods and services and money can f can go freely amongst the people. But you know, we define what we are doing together, and then we define what we what everybody is doing on their own. And the beautiful thing, of course is that you know Yawunde will be carved out as a confederal capital city and then a new capital by necessity must be built for East Cameroon and I've suggested that it should be built at Ebebda on the river Sanaga because the river Sanaga is very beautiful so we will have a very beautiful nice city along the Sanaga just like Paris is on the same and then it will be great and at least we'll have a city that looks like one because in Cameroon we have no city. And then in West Cameroon? In West Cameroon we could still we could still maintain Boya for political reasons, or you move it to Mafia or anywhere that you want. No problem. For its own capital. Correct. And then the two entities will um, will have their prime ministers, will have their 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 their, 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 their parliaments, and we have their, their their own governments. And the level of power over um, confederal issues issues that concern the entire nation the entire nation yes we will have a we will have a government in yaoundé now we have about 60 ministers which are oh, that's not that's not correct we can reduce that one to to a reasonable level maybe 20 21 ministers holding key positions no assistant ministers and what what have you you know and then um, that way it will reduce the, the the spending then we can also have a confederal parliament not 180 members as they are now we can reduce that to 100 and then um, we can also sh shut down the Senate, it's no use. Commission of Bilingualism is no use, we throw that out of the window. Um, the Social and Economic Council, I don't know what, I, at my age, I don't even know what they ever do. They, 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 they do every day of their lives. I can't tell you what they, what they have done ever since they have been existing, so you close that because it's a waste of money. You get what I'm saying? Um, and then you now go to, to this powerhouse called Enam and then you reformulate it. All right, uh, last word before we go. Well, we just hope that uh, we can get peace in our country and I'm hoping that uh, the dialogue will soon come because there's the process for dialogue. We said that this country needs a lot of dialogue because we don't, we, you know, there's a lot of tension in the country because we've not been dialoguing. And I've been saying that the, 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 the big dialogue we've been talking about in the country is a dialogue between Anglophones and the central government. It is not a dialogue between Anglophones and Francophones, no. And that big dialogue is not a dialogue in which Kamto and his team are, are involved. No, no, they are not involved in that. Otherwise, they will bring confusion. It's a dialogue between Anglophones and their issues as a state. And uh, because West Cameroon is a state, it's a dialogue between Anglophones and, um, and the central government. And Kamto has nothing to do with it. But however, the Bamilekes have a dialogue either with Beti people or with the state that concerns them. The Northerners have a dialogue either with the government or the Beti people that concerns them. And then the, the, the Anglophones, I mean the Francophones have a dialogue amongst themselves. The Bamilikes and Betis and Northerners should be able to be talking after themselves. Then after that, Anglophones, as a whole, I mean all Cameroonians should be talking to each other. So there are many dialogues. And the state also has to have a dialogue with the youths because the youths have not been treated fairly. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Nick Gwenyan, politician, educationist, founder of uh, St. Louis uh, University Institute, Institute and of course the medical doctor. Thanks for coming. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks ladies and gentlemen for staying with us. That's it for this edition of The Insight.